wild wild card weekend capped off as every good weekend is with a little double doink gives us a lot of teams that are now feeling very confident have some very strong quarterbacks traveling into well the lion's den where the chiefs the patriots the saints all roam we've got some great matchups coming but the key here is that some of these good quarterbacks have to go on the road and if you're looking at your chances to win or even make the super bowl playing on the road really segments these two sets of teams. Yeah, I mean, you get a couple things if you're a home team this weekend. You get a buy, right? And a buy is worth uh, a significant amount in terms of win probability. And then, uh, uh, regardless of what happened last week, being at home in the playoffs is worth more than being at home during the regular season. And so that's why you see you know, a clear bifurcation between the teams that have a home game this weekend in terms of the Super Bowl odds and the teams that don't. We've seen that historically. Philadelphia was weak going into the playoffs last year, but they had the one seed, and that carried them. Uh, the Denver Broncos in 2015, similarly, the one seed carried them to the Super Bowl. We have not seen a team without a first round bye make the Super Bowl since 2012 with the Ravens. So again, this thing matters, and that's why you're seeing it in the numbers here. And Joe Flacco, you know, was benched inexplicably by the Ravens. Uh, incredible to think about. The Chargers, the Eagles, the Colts, and the Cowboys are the underdogs in terms of making it to the Super Bowl and in their games this weekend. So you have to pick one. Are you going with the Chargers? Yeah, I think I'm going with the Chargers here just because if you think about Indianapolis, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have a difficult time in terms of if they get an upset. The two teams that are coming out of the New England Los Angeles Chargers game are far better than, for example, you know the underdog in Dallas uh, versus Los Angeles. So, you know they they just have a much tougher road here. And, and so I like the Chargers. They're a complete team, and in many ways they're a more talented team than New England. They're very very you know I think well distributed offensively. So Bill Belichick can't for, focus on one guy. Uh, and so I like the Chargers here out of those four uh, teams that are on the road this weekend. You must have overlooked the Eagles quarterback depth chart because Nick Foles has once again put the entire city of Philadelphia on his back. He does not have to go play in snow in Foxborough, which is the likely outcome on Sunday morning for the Chargers. And he's just got, he's got it, right? Third <laughs> down, under pressure, nothing is phasing him. It's amazing. He's not even playing better than Carson Wentz in aggregate. He's just doing it at the right time, which is something that has bugged the Eagles all season. That line has moved towards the Eagles pretty significantly from about 9 to 7 already. So people starting to wise up to the Eagles. Plus, if the Eagles happen to win that game and there's an upset on the other side, right, they get to play the Cowboys, which would be a really nice path for them to the Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, so for sure. the path is there. That's why I think if I'm looking at the underdogs, the Eagles are the one uh, that I am taking. All right, the top four. There's no doubt about it. They are the top four. And maybe even within that top four, there is a top two. Yeah, I mean, we know that quarterback play matters the most out of any variable uh, in the National Football League. And within quarterback data, the percentage of negatively graded throws that these guys throw is the most stable thing. And with Patrick Mahomes and Drew Brees, you get two guys who are under 10% negatively graded throws, the best in the NFL this season. So when I look at this, I, th I think it's clear. It's about quarterback play. And so far this season, Patrick Mahomes and Drew Brees have been the league's two best quarterbacks. And neither of these four teams are without blemish, right? We saw the Saints struggle against Dallas. Kansas City got off to a really bad start in Foxborough, had to play in Los Angeles. And the Patriots and Rams have really been up and down this season, right? Their quarterback play has not been as good as maybe it was uh, at their height, right? Brady and, and Goff have struggled. But the question to me is this, Breeze and Mahomes are so different, and one of their big differences is their experience in the playoffs. Yep. So how much does that matter in your mind? Yeah, I, it does matter. I mean, uh, first time quarterbacks in the playoffs, they were winless last week, and, and, and historically they have struggled. Uh, but with Pat Mahomes, I think you just have so much uh, in your deck of cards. You have the best play caller in the NFL by our metrics. You have you know one of the best run after the catch tight ends. Uh, in Travis Kelsey, you have one of the most explosive receivers in Tyreek Hill, an offensive line that is getting healthier with Laurent Duvernay-Tardif coming back uh, from injury, and you, you're playing at home. And, and I think that that's huge. The Chiefs defense has been far better at home this year. I think he'll be in more advantageous spots. So if a first-time quarterback is to win uh, in the playoffs this year, I think it has to be Pat Mahomes. You bring up the play calling of Andy Reid. They have the most potent screen game. They have the most potent quick game in the NFL, and that'll be important. I think we'll see that this weekend against the Colts, who like to just sort of sit back and keep you from making the big play. They can still beat you. And then on the defensive side of the ball, they're not strong. 
but they do now have a healthy pass rush, and if you're talking about playing Brady and Breeze, those are not exactly Aaron Rodgers back there, so that can be a boon in your favor, especially when you've got such a strong offense. Okay, put your money where your mouth is. The team you're taking to win the Super Bowl at this juncture is who? Yeah, there's not really value on them in Vegas, but right now we would have New Orleans as plus 233. They are the, they are the favorites, and they have been for weeks now, uh, so I'm going to still go with them. You're trying to reverse jinx your team. I get it. That's why I'm going to take the Chiefs. I actually really like the Chiefs. I think they have a much easier path to the Super Bowl. I don't think their defense is nearly as bad as the handicappers are giving them credit for. That pass rush, as I mentioned. And here's the thing. Offense contrary to popular belief, is what will win championships here. We, we saw it uh, in the so college football Dallas. final. Yeah, exactly. And here's the thing with their offense. It is consistent. They've only had 17 quarters in which they have not scored an offensive touchdown, which is the best we've seen since the 2014 Broncos. And they've had 17 quarters where they've scored two or more offensive touchdowns, which is the best we've seen since the 2013 Broncos. So they are consistent and explosive on the offensive side of the ball. I think that gets them to the Super Bowl, and in the Super Bowl, I'm going to take young Pat Mahomes against. He Drew won't Brees. be a first-time quarterback in that game. He won't. He'll have a little bit of experience by that time. Enjoy the divisional round this week. Check back in with us on Sunday night, where we will drop the PFF forecast and look ahead to the championship round. And if you want all the content, head to ProFootballFocus.com.